photo of wild puppies today. Ah, isn't that amazing? And it's not even a small pack either. We've got a larger pack, which is great. So I'm not sure how many dogs are here or which pack it is, but it is definitely one of the larger packs. I would imagine probably the Investec pack. That would be a pack that we would get. Um, the Investec pack would have come from the north. The Sands pack, as far as I know, yesterday were far west. So they were somewhere around the Sabe area. So I'd be very surprised if it was them. But Investec pack, it could be now. I'm sure some of you out there will know the differences between them and could tell us which ones are which. Uh, Herbie, it's just some slumpy madash on where to... This program features live coverage of an African safari and may... It's a frantic start to the morning. We've come out, the sun is rising, there are wild dogs, and this promises to be an epic morning. This is Safari Live. Good morning everybody and welcome to our sunrise safari and couldn't it not start it off in a better way. This is absolutely amazing. We've got this pack of dogs that is just on the road and they are playing and having a great time. Now, my name is Tristan and on camera today we've got Craig the Batman and as you can see we are well, our plans have been completely changed because of the wild dogs, which is fantastic. So, super excited that the dogs are here. Remember, you can get hold of us on hashtag Safari Live on Twitter if you want to know anything about the wild dogs or just about Africa in general. Now, James will be out just now on Bushwalk and Jamie will be out a little bit later. She's had a few mechanical issues on Wendy, so she's just changed on to Jigger and so we'll see her a little bit later. But, the dogs are slowly mobile now in a northerly direction. It looks like a pack of 10, which would, I would imagine is the Investec pack. And so we're going to try to see if we can't keep up with them. I don't think we're going to have them too long because if they run like this, we're going to be at the gate in about five minutes. So it is going to be probably a short but sweet sighting of them. But it's always, always incredible to watch the dogs, especially when they're playing and they're running along and chasing one another as they are doing this morning. It's just absolute chaos when it comes to wild dogs. I love when they're in these kind of moods. So I'm just going to try and pull to the side so that we can actually see them. But they seem to be playing a lot this morning. And this is the time that they'll get up and they'll start to move and hopefully like I say they're gonna turn and come a little bit further east and not just stay going north because if they start turning east then we'll be able to follow them but if they go north then it's gonna be a bit of an issue but you can see look they're busy playing at the moment and these games are all great because what will happen with this is that they're learning how to grab each other grab prey items it all becomes a vital part of their growing up and their way of sort of getting used to what they're doing so a lot of these will be younger dogs now I'm just going to pull a little bit forward here so we can see them playing but look at that they're back on their back legs and you can hear them squeaking a little bit wild dogs make the most amazing noises you'll find that they'll squeak and they'll woo and when they like this it is pure playtime and once what will happen is once the playtime is finished then it's time to go hunting so they would have been resting through the night it was a dark night the moon is starting to get sort of going towards the new moon and so the nights are not as bright as it was a few days or a few weeks ago and so the dogs will typically rest then and then now in the morning they'll start to get going and they'll start to be able to start hunting and but there's playtime first before the hunting starts there we go you can see a few of them on their back legs and that is typical wild dog play when they're up on their back legs and biting one another and going after one another that is absolutely typical of the dogs now we're trying to play leapfrog a little bit because Aubrey is here and he managed to find the dogs for us and so we're trying to let his guests have a view of what's going on as well as us so it is kind of a game of leapfrog and we let each one have a chance there you can see them up in the distance. Isn't this amazing? What a way to start the morning. And you can see those little dawn colors in the background. Really is very, very pretty. Now, what you'll notice is though, even though they're playing, that there is always one or two dogs that are off on the sides and they'll be the ones that are listening and just looking out for any signs of any potential prey items or predators. Often when they're playing and they're making noises, they're not actually no realizing what's going on around them. And sometimes it can be a time when you'll find things like lions or leopards can often cream up onto them. So you'll always find one dog that stops and listens and just kind of makes sure that they are kind of keeping up with what's going on. But I'm so excited, it's been so long since I've seen wild dogs and wild dogs have got to be one of the best animals to follow, particularly at this time of the morning. They're animals that really love to get going at this time, so to be able to find them now is absolutely amazing. 
Come on, puppies, you've got to turn east now. The way that you're going is not a good way. Now, for those of you who have never seen wild dogs, there is a very, very, very pungent smell that is happening at the moment. I'm just going to try to pull forward a little bit just because of there's a stump and I want Aubrey to be able to see. So I'm just going to go forward a little bit. Now, they have a very pungent smell. It's an interesting smell and one that's very difficult to actually sort of describe to you. But as you follow behind them, you'll find there's this kind of pungent musty kind of smell that comes off them and it is so typical when you smell that smell often if you're driving on the road it, you get so excited because you know that the dogs must be close and you can only smell it when they are close so at the moment it is very pungent as we follow in behind them but look at how they're using those big ears they're on the side of the roads they're listening because they're quite short animals they often can't see over the grass and so they would then rather use those big ears to hear what's going on then to actually see what's going on. There we go. Now you'll notice each one is also different. There's patterns on all of them. You can see that there's some that are brighter than others. So Michael, you're wondering when the wild dogs are denning, how far they're going to travel from the den in a day. Well, wild dogs are going to be starting to den shortly. For those of you who don't know, the wild dogs will den normally around May, June. And what happens is, is that they find an area, they'll have their puppies there, and then they are localized to that area. And generally they won't travel more than seven kilometers from that den. And every morning they'll go in a different direction. And they end up making this kind of like star shape as they go away. And the reason why they do that is so that every time they go out, their success of hunting is probably better. If they kept going on the same route, you'll find animals are going to get very wary of these wild dogs every day and are not going to come into that area. So if they go every day in a different way, it means that they are, one, going to be able to find the food, and two, they're going to be able to stop things like hyenas and lions picking up that they're going to the same place every time and following them and then endangering their puppies. So that's why they tend to do that. But probably about seven kilometers is the average, and that's from what um, I've picked up from a, a, a guy that I know very well, a friend of mine that studies the wild dogs in the Kruger. He says generally when they're denning, they don't move sort of more than seven kilometers from the radius of that den. But he says sometimes they'll range a little bit further. Most days, funnily enough, they actually don't go anywhere near that sort of distance. Sometimes they only go in sort of two, three kilometers. Now what is interesting with wild dogs is that a lot of people think that they are the most successful predator in terms of how many times they actually catch a prey item when hunting and it's not actually that true so if, this friend of mine was telling me that they did a study and it basically turned out that the dogs had a success rate that was very similar to the cats it's just that they chase so many more animals that they seem to in a hunting session be more successful but in terms of an actual every time they chase an animal they're really actually not much more successful than the cats it's just that they'll hunt so many more times in a hunting session than what say a lion or a leopard will a lion will stalk a buffalo if it misses it then lies down whereas dogs will chase five or six impala in their hunting session so snouty mom yes they do need to eat every day the wild dogs have a very very high meta oh look they're chasing something they're busy chasing a scrub here i'm gonna try see if i can't get in behind them here this is where we need connor and his drone because it would be much easier now they've gone into a thicket that i don't think we're going to be able to follow them into but let's try You can see one is running through here still. Now, this pack seems to love these scrub hairs. Here we go, there's one coming back this way. I just want to see if the scrub hair pops out in front of us. No. I don't know if they missed it. I didn't hear anything. Often when they hunt things like scrub hairs, you'll actually hear the kill happen. You'll hear a squeal of that animal and that will be the end of it. Now we've got one dog here. Another dog has just run from the back and then there was a whole bunch that ran in there after the scrub hair. But this is why wild dogs are the best animals to follow. It's just always action packed with them. They chase things all over the place. And like I was saying to you, now is the time of the day when they're looking to hunt. But look how amazing that light is on these guys as well. The sun has just risen and it's just spick spectacular now there is a one more behind me uh, the rest are starting to come out so they obviously missed the scrub here but it wasn't that amazing just to see the scrub here shooting in front of us wild dogs in tow and you can see like i was saying just now in terms of their actual success rate they're not always the most successful as everybody thinks they are there we go now when you don't catch a scrub here you chase one another I'm sure the rest will start filtering out of the bush. This is what happens is once they've chased, then the rest of them all start to come back to the road and they then try and find one another. Isn't that cool? Well, guys, you missed 
endangered species day by day, but it's still awesome to see you. Melissa, no, the wild dogs don't bark like domestic dogs, but just look at that light. Isn't that amazing? Look at all the colors that are coming off of that wild dog. Now, I've heard some people say that they are not pretty animals, but for me, I love their markings. They've got all these kind of mottled colors. Now, sorry, Melissa, I got a bit distracted there, but the wild dogs don't bark, no. They make a wooing sound when they're wanting to contact each other, and it's like a hollow, eerie sort of sound, and they'll go, woo, woo. Ooh. And that's how they'll contact one another. If they're very excited, then they start to squeal. But there's definitely no barking that takes place. They're not like domestic dogs in that regard. Now I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven now, so we've still got three that are, should be arriving shortly again and joining us. Oh, they're chasing that scrub here. You see that down the road? Now you've got to be watching when you chase after wild dogs because they often just come out of the bush in front of you but they were chasing a scrub head down the road so let's just try to see if we can't catch up with them. There we go, I think they caught it. They've caught it. Look at this. Isn't this amazing? Now that scrub here was a full scrub here one second ago. It's now finished. They were almost done with it. Each one is grabbing and getting its own piece. Now for those of you that are sensitive viewers, I'm sorry about that. That was unfortunately what happens to a scrub here in one minute with a pack of wild dogs. Isn't that insane? And just like that, it's all over. And you can see one of them has got most of the spoils. The rest are going to have to deal with the one or two little scraps. But this will not be enough to sustain a pack like this. They will just hunt that because the opportunity was there. And they each could grab a piece. And what you'll find as soon as they finish with this, they're going to carry on. And the next thing will probably be something like an impala. That's what they're going to try and go for. Because that will feed everybody really, really well. But wasn't that amazing? Didn't you see how fast those wild dogs can move? We must have been doing close to 40 kilometers an hour and they were just coasting along. And as we got around the corner, they'd already grabbed that scrub hair. And as we came around, the scrub hair was actually a whole entity. But what happens is they all just grab and they pull because they're fighting over that nutrients. And when you've got a pack this size with a small animal like that, it means that they don't have this sort of chance to be able to eat peacefully and that's why everybody just grabs a piece and off they go and often the animal will actually die just from being dismembered now it might sound like a horrible way to kill an animal but actually the wild dogs are far more humane in the way that they kill something because they basically grab it and the animal dies instantly as opposed to when you find lion or leopard where they'll sometimes actually eat the animal for long periods of time before it even dies now what's come along oh it's more wild dogs now hopefully they're going to greet one another. Look, they're all coming towards us. Isn't this amazing? Now, this is just them greeting. I'm sorry, I've got the bar in the way. It's just they're running all around us and I actually don't have any space to maneuver. And there you can see the rising sun as well. Isn't this incredible? Wow, what a way to start the day. We are being absolutely spoiled. Look at that golden sunlight as well. That is so, so special. Can you hear them as well? So those are those squeaks that I was talking about and whines that you'll sometimes hear. And that's because they're now fighting over one of those legs of the scrub here, unfortunately. So, John... You're wondering about the social hierarchy and how kind of dogs work and what the sort of pack logistics are. Well, basically we have an alpha male and female, and then there'll be a secondary ranking female underneath that. That's the beta female, and then the rest of the pack files, files in. They may not, they're not necessarily related to one another. What you will find is that there is often quite a big distribution between wild dogs, and you'll find young males, young females will often leave packs and join other packs or start their own packs, and so it's not always a family of um, individuals that are all related. Sometimes you will have other bloodlines within the pack itself, but there is an alpha male and an alpha female, and they will dictate what goes on. And funny enough, they're the only two that will breed. So I was talking earlier about the wild dogs denning, and that's what happens with these wild dogs, is that the male 
alpha and female um, will be able to breed and they will have their young ones sometimes you'll get a secondary female breeding so that would be the beta female and it depends on the alpha and the availability of food if there's a lot of food available then you'll find that that alpha female will allow the beta female to raise her pups and they'll be able to then feed them if they start to come into difficult times where they're battling to find food you'll find that sometimes she will even kill those beta females puppies just to make sure that hers survive so it really is quite a quite a sort of monarchy society and it's those two well alpha society should we say and those two are the ones that really dominate and the whole clan will do everything just for the wild dog, for the rest of the for the puppy should i say so everybody will work together to keep those alphas on top and to make sure that they are the ones that are looked after and their young are looked after first so it's quite an amazing system and that's why the sort of numbers of wild dogs are decreasing is because even though we've got a big pack here there's 10 animals you would think that multiple animals here could breathe no there will only probably be one female that breeds from this and then they all collectively try and help and look after these dogs i mean the puppies so it's a very difficult sort of breeding strategy and the other side of it is they've got a high mortality rate so over 50 percent of the the puppies will die naturally within the first year which means that a lot of these sort of numbers crash but this dog in the middle in front here has got to be one of the most beautiful wild dogs i've seen look at the whites on it around its bum area it's got the most incredible pattern very very cool they're such amazing animals i i can't tell you how incredible it is to watch them kind of go about their business as you can see nothing is slow with them everything is a bounce and a run and a trot ZDZ, you're wondering why wild dogs are endangered. Well, it's because the wild dogs, um, unfortunately, have a very slow breeding pattern. And so at the end of the day, they um, only the alpha male and female are breeding, combined with the fact that they have a high mortality rate, over 50% of the dogs do die. And then you'll find also that they've lost a lot of habitat. Dogs require massive areas to move around in. They're not animals that can kind of just move around in small spaces and so they go into big areas and a lot of Africa we've had a lot of issues with encroachment into those reserves and because wild dogs are such successful predators it means that they are unfortunately a lot of them get killed and poisoned by farmers because contrary to what people believe wild dogs actually can sometimes scavenge so they are not always killing for themselves they do sometimes pick up pieces of meat as they go past them and so it means that a lot of them have been shot and and, and poisoned and all kinds of things because farmers can you can imagine if a farmer's got a whole bunch of sheep and a and a pack of wild dogs comes in that's the end of that pa uh, that sort of flock of sheep they're going to eat everything they'll come into at a night or in a morning like this and they'll kill multiple ones and so their numbers have been lost through that they're also very susceptible to disease so they've become susceptible to canine distemper and rabies and as communities have come onto the fringes of these areas so they have ended up causing an issue where there's dogs that are coming into contact with um, these wild dogs and the wild dogs are then getting um, rabies canine distemper and it's affecting their population now they are look at this isn't this amazing they're just running in this golden light in front of us now i'm just trying to pull over so some of the cars behind us can also see but that is so cool they are being backlit and unfortunately for us though it's going to be all of about two minutes and they are going to be crossing to the north and out of our area so we've had a very special morning with them already but unfortunately i think that's going to be it and there you go you can see them trotting now hopefully they'll stick on the boundary just for a few seconds so we can actually get to see them unfortunately as well the area that we're going to the signal is not very good so we might have a few sort of breakups in the picture and a bit of stuttering so I do apologize about that but hopefully they'll carry on up the boundary and then we'll be okay but there we go isn't this amazing look at this light and this grass color with the dogs in it such a special scene It looks like they might just trot east. There is a big dam ahead of us. Now, wild dogs are very big exponents of water. And I say that because what they'll often do is they'll chase animals, and animals will often try and get to water for safety. But a wild dog knows that, and so they'll often chase towards water holes, and then they just surround the water hole, and then it becomes a patience game, and they literally will try and out 
sort of wait that prey animal and they'll just sit on the edge and they'll just trot around and round and round and round and they wait for this sort of animal to fatigue and the animal tries to escape and then they often get it so they will often do this sometimes they, unfortunately they chase into places like Chitwa Dam which is never the best place to chase anything because the crocodiles snap up all your food but I have seen them chasing impalas into dams where they've exhausted that impala so much that the impala eventually dies of a heart attack from heart attack from swimming itself to um, to death and it's a, a horrible thing to watch but once the animal then died they can then go in and retrieve it So hillbilly safari and you're wondering if the heart of a wild dog is larger for to enable it to sort of get more blood flow on these hunts than a domestic dog. I'm not 100% sure. I, I, I will have to find out for you. I don't know. I've never read anything about it saying that that is the case. Um, it is pro could be quite possible, but I, I have a feeling it's more to do with the fact that these dogs are almost fit animals so they they like us as people they've just trained a lot more and they do a lot more than a domestic dog and therefore they're able to sustain themselves for long periods of time but i've never heard anything about the heart being bigger now i'm just trying to get to another part where we can see them because they have so i'm gonna try to just get up this hill a bit we should be able to have a long distance view of them but it's interesting i would imagine that there must be some sort of Maybe, maybe the muscle and the heart is thicker and that therefore means it pumps better and pumps blood faster. It's an interesting thing. I'll have to try and find out for you and see. But I haven't heard anything about that. Now, from where we are now, we should be able to just see them starting to come towards the dam here. This is what I was talking about. So we're at Sydney's dam and they're just behind this thicket, but they are slowly moving towards the dam itself. So I'm hoping they will pop out, but unfortunately that's in all likelihood going to be the last view we have of the wild dogs is them going into the distance. But wasn't that an action-packed way to start the morning? I can't believe wild dogs are there. My, one of my favorites. It's such an epic thing to start with and to see and to watch and see the chaos that sort of reigns with wild dogs. And you can see, even though they've eaten the scrub here, most other predators would have started to just calm down and would have taken it easy. Not the wild dogs. The wild dogs are now in full flow. They're still looking for food. That wasn't nearly enough to sustain them. And so now they're carrying on and trying to find other animals to hunt. And I was actually hoping that we would see some impala in these open clearings. Often when we come in the morning, these open sections are covered in impalas and I was hoping that there would be some and the dogs would spot them and we'd see them chasing them around here and trying to see if they would then catch something. Right, now it's time to reintroduce you to all the other members of the pack this morning. So let's